Welcome back, it's the Clay Golem here, and we are, yeah, surprise, back in Foundry VTT. I want to talk about shops. Um, <laughs> we've had a little bit of an issue with our shops, haven't we? Uh, so I want to look at a simple way that we can do shops. So previous videos, uh, we have looked at um, setting up these shops. Why is this not opening? What have I done? Um, we created these journals. Uh, and we created the Stonehill Inn as just it's not linked anymore because I changed it. Uh, and we were using Monk's Enhanced Journal to create these shops, which is great. It's I love it. It's absolutely brilliant. But we know that there is an issue between this and the find one the new character sheet. So if we go back to the old character sheet, the legacy one, this one it works fine. So we can use the old legacy one, brilliant, not a problem, in which case monks works. Um, seems a shame that we uh, we don't get to use the, the nice uh, the nice character sheets. Blimey, now I've got them all stuck on the wrong one. Uh, it seems a shame not to be able to use the nicer character sheets for this. Now again, I mentioned in the last video that there is also the, um, the, uh, the tiny 5e character sheets as well, which tidy, not tiny, tidy, um, that currently aren't compatible either. So yeah, Monk's Enhanced Journal, it's brilliant at the moment, not really an option. So how could we do shops alternatively to this? Quite easily, to be fair. Uh, they're not gonna be anywhere near as automated, but they still will work. So let's create a new journal entry. Okay, I'm gonna just call this uh, shop example. Uh, and it, we can leave it as text, that's absolutely fine. And I'm just gonna have it as normal text like this. So we've just got this here. Now I can obviously change the title uh, and I can edit this and I can write whatever ever I want. Things for sale here. So how do I get these items in? Well, we know that with the 3.0 engine, we can now do links and stuff directly in the journal. Uh, we've done dice rolls and stuff like that. We can link items. So watch this let's say right so first of all before i do that let me have a look at my items that we created um, and i want to look at my in goods so we've got ale beer cheap private room cheese a common room one two three four five six seven eight items i've got eight items here i want to have for sale in this shop i'm going to go to table and i can insert a table and I'm going to want three columns, and I'm going to, what did I say? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight items. So I'm gonna put nine in. I'm gonna insert a table. Now this table, I'm going to have quantity. So the number there are available, the item, and the price. I think you can see where this is going. Now if by hovering over these lines, it's just like tables in things like Word, um, because it's this WYSIWYG, um, with what you see is what you get kind of editor we can hold down on that and we can move this table around so obviously this is going to look different depending what your screen size is for everybody uh, involved so a price can be quite small and I can leave plenty of room for the item so I want ale now it's got lots of ale it's going to be an in for this one I'm going to drag from my item ale and I'm going to drop it into that box and I can't remember the price was it four copper pieces and over here I'm just going to write 4CP. Okay, So you can see how this is going to work, can't you? Beer. Drop that in there. That was 6CP, I remember that one. Um, I might do, so that's, let's do wine. Let's do our items in a an order because this is not going to automatically order anything for us. It says only 40 of the wine. How much was the wine? The wine was two silver. I have no idea why I said it like that. <laughs> slightly losing my mind um, and obviously we can do the same with we can add the cheese in we can add the uh, bread in the mutton stew we can put those in um, we can put the cheap private room and we can put the common room and we can just I'm not going to bore you with filling everything in and we can just put those other items uh, prices down there and the quantity they've got you know cheap private room oh, there's five rooms um, and there's six spaces in the common room bed so we can do that so this just gives an idea um, of what we can have and what we don't need to have so let's close this 
and this is what it looks like. Now I've still got Monk's Enhanced Journal um, activated in here, uh, so this looks like Monk's Journal, but this works exactly the same without Monk's on. We're just going into the journal, because all we're doing is putting those links in. So now what we've got, remember why I said one of the problems or the challenges I find as a DM is they pop into a shop and say, oh, I want to buy blah, 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 what's this, what's that? And you end up having to try and flick through the PHBs, like what kind of price would that really be? Well, this means that you could set up some generic shops so you've already got that stuff, or even set up a journal of common prices. So we talked about the use of the GM screen, which I've still got installed down here, not really been using it much. We could put a common prices thing on our GM screen, have a tab for that. We've got main and combat. That is one thing we could do. We could create a single journal that might have lots of pages for different types of shop. Accommodation prices, you know, in prices versus weapon prices, armor smith prices. And you could do that. Um, or you could do them tied directly to a location. So this is specific prices for uh, the Stonehill Inn, for example. And I could call that Stonehill if I wanted to. But it means it's right here and we can reference it much, much quicker than the PHB. So you, you probably get what I'm trying to say. I don't want to overemphasize it. But um, there's a couple of different ways we can just use the journal for this. Now, because we've dragged these items in here, um, we can hover over it. We can see descriptions of them and things like that. What it means is if we take our character, here's Haley. It was always Haley. Hi, Haley. Um, what we can do is go to our inventory. Um, let's get rid of this. Get rid of this ale and this beer. So we haven't got that anymore. Um, but characters can still come in here, and if they wanted to buy, uh, if they wanted to buy some a loaf of bread, okay, they're not going to eat it now. They want to take it with them. That can still be dragged into the character sheet. Yes, it won't take the money off automatically, but most games that wouldn't do that anyway. If you're playing face to face, they've got to go to their character sheet and alter it. Um, if you know uh, most a lot of VTTs don't automate it the foundry basic with 3.0 um, game engine for D&D doesn't do it automatically so you know most people are used to doing this anyway but if you're dragging the item over you're already in your character sheet you can just go up and edit this oh well actually you know I've now got 55 of those and, and whatever it might be you know and now I've got eight of those so you can still do that, but the item ends up in your character sheet. Now you might say, oh, but hang on, if they're just consuming it, well, that's fine. If they're going to sit down and they want a mutton stew, they can just take the price off. They don't need to drag it into inventory. And we don't even need to use that item. We could just write mutton stew in there to make sure that they can't just drag it in and walk around with mutton stew. I don't have a problem. If they buy mutton stew and they want to walk around with it, great. But what you don't want to do is certainly, I'm going to walk around with a cheap private room in my backpack. Uh, that doesn't make sense. So we could just write that in that table rather than that. Okay, so that's the items from there. Just to prove the, the flexibility of this method. It's like, oh, hang on, I've run out of room on my table. That's fine. If I click in this bottom row here, I can go back to this, you see where I am on this table thing, and I can go to... Um, I can add an extra column or delete one if I need to, but I can add another row afterwards. Here we go, I've got another row here, so I can expand this table even when I've finished. Now it's a bit fiddly to keep going to that to add a, add, a add a column, add a column, add a row, add a row. So it's easier if you know how many items you're going to have in the first place and just set it up in one table at the beginning, a bit like I did. And look how horribly, yeah, how horribly positioned uh, that that's that that's a bit better now it's not expanding with it um <clears throat> and of course we can do things like we should be able to center some of these things um font that's font paragraph alignment we can hopefully center that okay might not like it because it's in the table but anyway you can do a number of different things other than just having it in there but one other thing I want to point out, just in case it's not obvious, or somebody might go, oh, but what about, let's do that. If we go to the SRD, let's just open that up on the left-hand side. Uh, let's go to equipment. Um, let's say that this place happens to also sell, these are all magical things, I don't want magical things. It doesn't matter. <laughs> why, why is that a problem? Uh, it also sells robes. We can drag straight from the SRD 
and have those robes in there as well. So he's got one set of robes and they are 25 GP for whatever reason. Okay, close that. And again, see that appears in here. You can hover over it. It tells you simple or ceremonial wear. And we've got those descriptions popping up. So if players are not sure what it is they might be buying, they can do that. Open up Haley, uh, and we can, if we want to, drag those robes in. Here we go. We've now got robes here. Uh, and of course, they're fully functional robes. So if you're doing that with equipment and weapons, um, armor and stuff like that, you can drag it straight into your character sheet. So I hope that's kind of useful. Bit of a quick video. Just wanted to show you that as an alternative, which I think is actually probably the way forward for me with this campaign until Monk's Enhanced Journal is fixed. Um, it means I can have my pages, my separate pages for description, a page for the map, a page for the shop, and then my page for my DM notes, um, all kept separately, but, but all within the same journal. Um, so yes, I have a journal that's called Stonehill Inn, different pages in there, different information, share what I want to when I want to, and players can see prices whenever they like. Um, and when they're there, they can drop that stuff into their character sheet, manually edit their costs and think their pricings, their coins and stuff to make that work. Um, that's my idea. That's what I think I will go forward with until Monk's Enhanced Journal is, um, is compatible with the new character sheet, whichever, whichever direction that fix needs to come from. Um, until that's sorted, this is the way forward for me. I um, hope this has been useful. If you've got any other ideas of how we could do shops that you think might be uh, alternative, leave it in the comments. Cheers, guys. See you in the next one.